Hello, my name is Judge Michelle Davis, and I'm chambered in Wright County in the 10th Judicial District. This presentation will provide you with information about the hearing you have scheduled with a judge. This hearing is called the Initial Case Management Conference, or ICMC for short. To help you get the most out of this hearing, it's helpful to understand these three things. One, the purpose of the Initial Case Management Conference. Two, a general description of alternative dispute resolution and the early neutral evaluation program. And three, what will happen in your case after the Initial Case Management Conference. First, the purpose of the Initial Case Management Conference. The ICMC is an opportunity for you, your lawyer if you've hired one, and the other party in the case to meet with a judge. This meeting will occur within three to four weeks of filing your divorce or custody case. The purpose of this conference is for the judge to find out what issues the parties have agreed to in your case, what issues are not yet resolved, and what efforts have been made to reach an agreement. For example, the judge may ask whether or not you and the other party have gone to mediation. In addition, during the conference, if the county has such a program, the judge will explain to you what the Early Neutral Evaluation Program is and will offer you a chance to participate in the program. Finally, the judge will issue an order detailing the next steps in your case. Parties can make agreements at the conference regarding some temporary or even final issues, but the judge cannot make decisions at the ICMC about things upon which you don't agree. Second, a general description of alternative dispute resolution and the early neutral evaluation program. In most family law cases where there are issues upon which the parties don't agree, some form of alternative dispute resolution is required. Alternative dispute resolution or ADR processes are alternative methods to help people resolve legal problems before going to court. ADR involves an independent third person called a neutral the neutral tries to help people resolve or narrow the areas of conflict. Mediation and early neutral evaluation are both types of ADR. If there are issues in your case that you are not able to agree upon, your case may be recommended for early neutral evaluation. The judge will describe the early neutral evaluation program, or ENE, available in your county. You should have received written materials about the ENE program when you receive notice of your initial case management conference. Read those materials carefully and listen to the judge's explanation of the e, e program. After the judge explains the program to you, the judge will ask you to decide whether or not you agree to participate in the e, &E program. e, &E is completely voluntary. If you have questions, you should ask them of the judge or your lawyer if you've hired one. Before your initial case management conference, you may also want to find out more about mediation, e and &E, and ADR in general. Information about all of these programs is available through the Frequently Asked Questions section and links found on this website, the relevant help topics on the Minnesota Judicial Branch website, or at your local county law library located in your local courthouse. The specific details of the e and &E program available in your county will be more fully explained by the judge at the Initial Case Management Conference. In general, the Early Neutral Evaluation Program is designed to help people reach agreements on custody, parenting time, and financial issues. Because the e, e program is voluntary, both parties will need to agree to attend the program before the court can issue an order for e, &E. If custody or parenting time is at issue in your case, you may choose an option called Social e, e Early in the process, which could be only days or a few weeks from now, but before you've spent money on attorney's fees, custody evaluations, or motions, you will meet with two evaluators. Generally, there will be one male evaluator and one female evaluator. Though in cases involving a same gender couple, the parties may choose evaluators of the same gender. If there are attorneys on the case, they will also be present at the E&E &E session. The evaluators are experienced family law attorneys, psychologists, or family therapists with considerable knowledge about custody and parenting issues. When you meet, each party will explain their positions on custody and parenting time issues. Then the evaluators will confer with one another, offer their professional opinion on your case, and offer recommendations on potential settlement ideas. They will assist you in attempting to reach an agreement. The process is non-binding meaning you do not have to agree with the evaluators or follow their recommendations, 
but the process may give you an idea of how the issues may be handled by the court if you went to trial. If you have financial issues in your divorce, there's also a financial e and &E process to help resolve issues like child support, spousal maintenance, and property division. Instead of meeting with two evaluators as you would in a social e and &E, in a financial e and &E, you meet with one evaluator. The evaluator is typically an experienced family law attorney or a financial expert, like a CPA, with experience in family law issues. The process is similar to the process used in custody cases. The evaluator will offer a professional opinion to try to help you reach a reasonable and realistic outcome. Third, what happens next in your initial case management conference? In some cases, the parties reach an agreement on some or all of the issues during the initial case management conference. In these cases, the judge will make a record of your agreement and then direct you or your lawyer to put together the paperwork to finalize your agreement. You may need to appear at a separate hearing to finalize your agreement. If your case is not completely settled and you choose to participate in early neutral evaluation, the judge will give you a roster of evaluators to choose from and tell you how much the E&E session will cost. The judge will sign an order that sets out the issues for the evaluator or evaluators and in some counties, schedule the date and time for the E&E &E session. The order will give you the names and the contact information for the evaluators. Once you agree to E&E, &E, you must pay for and attend the session as directed by the judge. Only the judge can cancel an E&E &E session once it has been agreed upon by the parties and ordered by the court. If you do not reach an agreement at the E&E &E session, the evaluators will notify the judge that the case has not settled and a scheduling order will be issued if one was not issued previously at the ICMC hearing. If you do not choose to participate in early neutral evaluation, a scheduling order will also be issued at the initial case management conference. The scheduling order will set the deadlines for motions, discovery, property evaluations, and custody evaluations. If you have not attempted mediation and you've opted out of E&E, &E, in most cases, you will be required to try some other type of alternative dispute resolution. The scheduling order will set a deadline to complete this requirement. The scheduling order will also set the date and time for your next mandatory hearings, called pretrial and trial. I hope this presentation has helped you understand the initial case management conference process. Any questions about your case or this process can be directed to the judge or your attorney. You can also find more information about these topics on the Minnesota Judicial Branch website, www.mincourts.gov. For individuals that do not have an attorney, the Minnesota Judicial Branch also offers a statewide self-help center staffed by attorneys that can explain court rules, procedures, and official forms. Learn more about these services at www.mincourts.gov backslash self-help. Thank you for watching. If you are a victim of domestic abuse by the other party or threats as defined in Minnesota Statutes Chapter 518B, you are not required to try alternative dispute resolution and you will not be penalized by the court in later proceedings. If you have been a victim of domestic abuse or threats and would like to use alternative dispute resolution to resolve the issues in dispute, some providers are skilled in the techniques that keep the parties separated and avoid the use of intimidation by one party against the other you may contact the court administrator about resources in your area.